Hello there and welcome back to my channel. Anchor charts are a fantastic tool to support student learning and have available as a reference in your classroom, but there are quite a few problems with them. More money, more problems, Stanley. First of all, anchor chart paper is insanely expensive, and if your school doesn't provide it for you, that's gonna add up quickly. Second, anchor charts can be very time consuming to create in the middle of a lesson, and if you rush the process too much, they end up looking messy. Third, anchor charts can take up a ton of space around your classroom, so if you have a smaller space, you might quickly run out of space. But in today's video, I'm gonna propose an alternative that will solve all of these problems. Let's start by clarifying what even is an anchor chart. An anchor chart is a chart created with your students in real time to capture important parts of a lesson. That might include steps to follow, processes, examples, and then it is going to be displayed for your students to reference. You might be wondering, how is that different than a poster? Posters are typically pre-created and then hung up and displayed, whereas anchor charts are created with your students in real time. Now, that can be time consuming, so some teachers will actually pre-create certain parts of the anchor chart, such as the title, the headings, maybe the images, so it becomes almost like a template that is filled in with students, and that can be done using sticky notes or just writing in the blank areas of the poster. Now, while that does save a little bit of time and does make things a little bit easier, I personally think my alternative is even better. My suggestion is to utilize digital anchor charts. Now, a digital anchor chart would just be a virtual representation of a paper anchor chart. It would typically be created in some sort of a design program or app, such as Google Slides or Canva. Now, if you're interested in how to actually create a digital anchor chart, good news, I already have you covered with a tutorial video, so I will link that for you down in the description box if you have not already seen it. In this video, we're gonna take a deeper dive into digital anchor charts, and I'm gonna share some hacks and ideas for actually utilizing them with your students. But first, I do wanna highlight some of the benefits of digital anchor charts, just in case you're not on board yet. In my experience, Creating a digital anchor chart is a lot faster and easier than creating a paper anchor chart. And yes, I am fairly tech savvy and I know that plays a role, but when you create something digitally, you're able to move things around, backspace if you make any mistakes, you can change things as you go. Whereas with a paper anchor chart, you're kinda, you know, you're tied to what you put on the paper. If you do it in pencil, you can erase it, but if you erase too hard, you have a hole in the paper, it just, you know, it goes downhill very quickly. <laughs> Creating digital anchor charts is also much cheaper because you don't have to purchase paper. If you print it, obviously that utilizes paper, but we're gonna come back to that. However, you don't have to purchase that oversized paper that is very expensive. Very tasteful, although expensive. Speaking of printing, digital anchor charts can be used with students in many different ways. So once you create it once, you can then repurpose it. So you can print individual copies for students. You can print them poster size, which we're gonna come back to that as well. You can have it available as an image on student assignments. You can share it with families and it becomes much more versatile than a traditional paper anchor chart. Digital anchor charts can also take up less space. You can have them all together as one Google Slides file or even a PDF file. And then students can look through and access all of them without having to look around your room, but there are still ways that you can have them displayed, but save some space and we'll come back to that. It is also very easy to add images to digital anchor charts. And yes, I am saying this as someone who is not an artist by any stretch of the imagination. And every time I tried to draw on a paper anchor chart, it just ended in disaster. But even a step beyond that with digital anchor charts, you can make them more interactive by adding links or videos. And then finally, digital anchor charts are much easier to reuse year after year. I know some teachers, and I tried this as well, would create kind of the template of the anchor chart, laminate it, and then write on top of it with a dry erase marker or by adding sticky notes. 
However, it never failed. If you're like me, you would end up hanging them on your windows because you didn't have enough space. And then the sun would fade all of the ink over time and you would have to recreate it anyway, which took a lot of time. With digital anchor charts, you can easily duplicate the file or even just go in and edit the original file and have it available to use year after year. Hopefully we're now on the same page. I have converted you to being team digital anchor charts. So now let's dive into different ways that you can utilize them with your students. The first way is obviously the most standard way you can create the anchor chart in real time with your students, which, you know, you should be doing anyway. I did show you how to create a digital anchor chart in that tutorial video that I mentioned, which is linked for you down below, but this is the anchor chart that we ended up creating. Obviously you need to develop this with your students in real time. So I would suggest starting with a template that looks like this. You've got your title, you've got your number, example problems already kind of set up, and then you can fill in those different parts as you go. I'm gonna zoom in just so it's a little bit easier to see. That's another great benefit of digital anchor charts. You can zoom in. Whereas if you have your students up on the carpet, it never fails, the kid in the back can't really see what you're doing up on the board. So from here, we could discuss putting that single digit number on the left side and then expanding the 3,584. So I can type in 3,584. And you will notice this is so much faster than if I were writing it and trying to change out colored markers because I already set my template up to have the colors that I wanted and all I had to do was start typing in it. And if your students have personal devices, you could even give them the view only link for this file. So in order to do that, you just go to share under restricted, change it to anyone with the link or yours might look slightly different if you have a district account and then leave it as viewer. If you share this link with students, they could then watch in real time as you manipulate this. So they would be able to see it up front and center on their own device. Then once your anchor chart is created, the second way you can use it with your students is actually printing it poster size and displaying it in your classroom just like you would a paper anchor chart. If you are interested in how to print it poster size, I have a tutorial video for you, which I will link down below. I go through a few different options and this is not the only size you can create. You can make it even bigger than this or smaller if you want. So you can really customize the size of your poster in order to fit the size of the space that you have. But if you don't have a ton of space, you can also print it just normal size, you know, regular sheet of paper, and you can then put it into a class binder of anchor charts. You can slip this into a page protector, and as the year goes, you will build a binder of all these different anchor charts that your students can reference. You could have one binder for the entire class or even a binder for each group of students. You also can take that digital anchor chart and print it mini size. This is two to a page, and you can use these a few different ways. But first, let me show you how to do it. Within Google Slides, in order to print two to a page, I need two of the exact same anchor chart. So I'm just going to duplicate this slide by right clicking, choosing duplicate slide. It now has made two copies of the exact same slide. I'm going to go to file and I'm going to download this as a PDF. Now I'm going to open this PDF in Adobe Acrobat, but you can also get Adobe Reader for free. I will link that for you down in the description box. I'm gonna to come to File and Print, or I can click the Print button. And under Page Sizing and Handling, I'm gonna select Multiple. It's going to default to two pages per sheet. You could even do more if you wanted to make them even smaller, but I really like the two per page size. My favorite way to use these little mini anchor charts is number one, you can actually have students glue these in their notebook. This fits perfectly in a composition notebook or even a spiral notebook, and it becomes their own anchor chart or their own version of notes that they can reference as needed right in front of them during lessons, but they can also take home and have available for homework. Another way you can utilize these mini anchor charts is by creating a mini anchor chart 
display for each group or even at your small group table using Ikea picture frames. These picture frames are super cheap. Last time I checked, they were like 99 cents. You take out the plastic pieces from the middle and then hole punch the anchor chart and hang it using book rings off the top. As you add anchor charts, you can then flip through them. And these are great, like I said, to have at each table or at a small group table so that students can reference them. Another option is to create a QR code that links to the Google Slides file with all the anchor charts. So you can continue adding anchor charts as slides within the Google Slides file. Then you can come to share. Once again, you wanna keep that link to viewer, that way students don't go in and edit it. But I'm just gonna copy this link and then I'm gonna to go to a QR code generator. And there's a lot of different apps and websites and things that will allow you to create QR codes. This is just one example. It's the dash QR code dash generator.com. I will link that for you, but I'm going to paste the URL. It's going to create this QR code. From here, I can either print the QR code and give copies to students. They could glue it in their agenda book or in their notebook. And then anytime they need to access the digital anchor charts, they can just scan it. It saves a little bit of paper, but you can also post these QR codes around the classroom as well. So students can scan them and be able to pull up the anchor charts no matter where they are. Similarly, you can just share out the file on your LMS or learner management system, such as Google Classroom. Once again, you wanna make sure it's view only. I know on Google Classroom, you can share it as a material, which will allow students to open and view the file, but they can't make any edits. But this is a great way for students to have easy access, especially if they are completing digital assignments. You also can share these digital anchor charts with families. This is great for extending learning beyond just the classroom and connecting it to home. You can do this a few different ways. You can have that link to the Google Slides file as a view only link, and you can send it out in emails to parents. You can download the Google Slides as a PDF and attach it to emails or add it to a class website. If you have that, the possibilities are endless. Now I want to share just three of my best tips that I discovered as I started using digital anchor charts in my class classroom. Tip number one is to use colors. Whenever I created paper anchor charts, I did try to use colorful markers, but it never failed that they would be out of ink or it was just too time consuming to constantly change markers. But when you're creating a digital anchor chart, you can easily change the color of the fonts in order to color code things. In my example, I showed how each place value was color coded and that helps students see those connections throughout the math strategy. But another thing I love to do was utilize the highlight tool. Let's say I wanna highlight the answer here just to bring students attention to it. I'm gonna click and drag in order to select that text. I'm gonna come up here to the highlight color and then I'm gonna choose yellow, but I can use any color that I want. This is great if you're just reviewing an anchor chart. So maybe after you've even created it with students and you've noticed some students are struggling with one step, you can go in and highlight it as you're discussing it with the class. You can also utilize colors when you print the anchor charts. I mentioned how you could print them mini size, standard size, or poster size, but you could also print them on colored paper. And this could help you if you're displaying them in your classroom or even in student notebooks, differentiate between subject areas or units. You could assign each subject a different color or each unit a different color, and it would help students be able to see those connections. My second tip is to reuse templates year after year. This is just like creating that template of an anchor chart, laminating it, and then rolling it up and sticking it in your closet. But I feel like digital anchor charts are much easier to reuse year after year. You can always go into Google Slides and click file, make a copy. That way you can keep your original but have a new copy to be able to edit. Or you can always duplicate a slide by right clicking and choosing duplicate slide and then going in and just making a few changes either to fit the needs of that particular group of students or to already have the template ready to go. If I made this anchor chart last year, all I need to do now is go in and delete the answers. I'm gonna delete the text in these boxes 
and I'm able to go ahead and reuse that template with students. My third tip is to add the digital anchor chart to digital assignments. Over the past few years, teachers have gotten very used to digital assignments because they're much easier to be able to create and then reuse again and again but you can actually insert that digital anchor chart into digital assignments. So my favorite way to do this is exporting the digital anchor chart as an image. So in order to do that, we're gonna click on file, hover over download, and then you can choose either JPEG or PNG image. It's gonna save that image to your computer. You can then come to a digital assignment such as this is a bad example because it's a science lesson, but just to show you how it works, you can either add that digital anchor chart image, which I'm just gonna click and drag it over, but you can also go into insert and then select the image from there. You can either put it off on the side of the slide. I'm gonna just resize it to make it a little bit bigger, easier to see. You could put it right on the slide so you could have it just kind of fit in and then what students are completing is on the other side. Or you could insert an additional slide. So I could insert in just a blank slide and I'm gonna copy and paste it on here. So the anchor chart could have its own slide within the assignment. What I love about this is it really brings students attention to it while they're working. It makes them more likely to utilize it versus an anchor chart that's up in your classroom and they may not think to look at it. Plus, they can always zoom in to get a closer look. They can resize it, make it smaller or larger as needed. And you could even link that to another file that's gonna give students additional support, whether it's a website or a video that you've created. Once again, possibilities are endless. We will see because a blank sheet of paper equals endless possibilities. Now you could also add just a link to the digital anchor charts file, but the chances of students clicking on it is, you know, not very good. So I prefer to actually add the image right into the file. Now, good news, if you teach upper elementary math and you want a set of pre-made anchor charts that are both ready to print, but also ready to be created in real time with students, I've got you covered. I've put together a product for you. It will be linked down in the description box if you wanna grab it. But I really hope that this video was helpful for you. Don't forget, I also have a video on how to create the digital anchor chart, as well as how to print it poster size. Both of those videos will be linked down in the description box. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.